Hey everyone, um, welcome to day four of isolation art making. Um, I'm Erica Small Coffee. You can follow me here. You can follow me on um, Instagram at Small Coffee Art. And um, today we're going to be looking at toilet paper, which normally wouldn't be that exciting. But uh, if we look closely, absolutely everything in our in our world can be interesting. So I have this beautiful uh, toilet paper roll now. Um, no, no endorsements here. This is my favorite brand. I like soft toilet paper. Um, we don't buy a lot of tissue in the house, so it has to also work as tissue for blowing your nose. Now, this one has a really pretty print. You can actually see it when you look up close. Now we hardly ever pay attention to the design that's on here, but actually um, there are people, that's their job, to pay attention to the designs that are on the toilet paper. So this one has like a rose and it has a couple leaves, a stem, and this little um, little design and then lots of perforated kind of dots where it attaches the, the different plies together. So how do you draw something that is white on white. That's something we practice a lot when we're, we're starting to learn value and tonal shading. And um, your toilet paper at home would definitely be good for you to do observation on. Uh, I have the, the light of the window coming in here and so it's illuminating this really well. It's giving me quite a bit of contrast along this surface. So I have a bright area up here, coming around to a darker area over here. Now, if I tip it on its side, I would have the, the dark part of the interior, part of the cylindrical roll here. And also you're gonna see some really cool lighting stuff. So it's hitting it just where this sticks out a little bit. And you're gonna see some light here, some dark here. And of course the cylinder changes to like the shape of the ellipse here. And the ellipse here will change, it'll vary as I tilt this. So when you are drawing your toilet paper roll, um, you're gonna have to pick what angle you're going to draw yours from. Now, hopefully you have toilet paper at home um, and you are someone who has currently run out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, do a couple little sketches first. I'm gonna show you some stuff. I looked up toilet paper patterns on uh, on the internet and you just have to do a quick image search and you'll actually find all sorts of cool patterns. So I'm just going to check, I'm going to do a couple patterns here. And so we're thinking about the fact that our paper is white and toilet paper also white. But there's a reason why we can see that white pattern, I guess, or that non-existent, it's not even a colored pattern, it's just embossed into it. Um, how we can see that pattern on on our paper, how we can draw that. All right, so the pattern that I have particularly on mine I'll do first. I'll just unroll a little bit. Hopefully I can see the light. And so I'm just going to lightly sketch the basic shape. I'll go close up so I'm not drawing a whole bunch of patterns. So it has this scalloped design, almost like a cloud. And then it has a rose that's made out of little arcs. So I can imagine the machine that has the metal embossing plate that um, embosses this. So we can always look closely at the world around us for those little indications of where uh, an artist, someone working in the arts, a designer, an industrial designer, a product designer, where they have left their mark. Now to imagine that there was likely an entire committee that helped agree upon this design for this toilet paper. So there is a lot of invisible uh, applications of the arts that we don't necessarily always think of. Um, that are all around us. And I love talking to my students about that. Like where, where does art hide in your world? So I'm just 
adding some little dots here. Now, I did these ones darker because those embossments on my toilet paper is, uh, they're deeper. And then I'm just doing these little dots and I'm, I didn't bother counting. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then the next one comes out of the top of here. So then that would continue and it's a similar pattern. So this is all dots here. All right, so there's a couple more patterns. I encourage you, instead of just copying my pattern, to draw your pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on time-lapse for a minute, and I'm gonna draw a couple different patterns that I found on the internet. All right, so now that I have uh, a few of these patterns drawn, of course, I just drew them quickly. Um, you can actually take your time, really, and you could look at this very close up, and you could shade these so that you have the darker areas, the lighter areas where the light's hitting it. You could try tonal value on this. You could crinkle it up and then try to draw the patterns on it. What I'm going to do today with these patterns is pretty simple. I'm either gonna think about these patterns, redraw them, but today um, I'm gonna to actually draw the toilet paper roll. So I'm going to have it off camera um, simply because I don't, my tripod doesn't allow me too much space, but I'm gonna to talk to you quickly about drawing ellipses. So again, if you tuned into one of my live videos, I actually had um, a quick instruction on how to draw a cylinder in space if you're not really good at uh, thinking about three dimensions. So we know, for example, that a circle, right, we have a circle here, and that is essentially what your toilet paper tube looks like from the top. And if we look at it from the side, right, we know that theoretically, if we weren't to draw it in perspective, it would be sort of a rectangular or a square shape depending on your particular role. Now, if we start looking at it in perspective, um, it's going to change shape quite a bit. So it's going to start having an ellipse on the top where we see the squish shape. Now, if you are having a hard time figuring out kind of how that works, but you do know some perspective, you can start thinking about your shape. And I mean, there's lots and lots of wonderful tutorials on how to do this. So you would start with your cube shape, okay? Because we know that the sides of this are, are kind of like a cube. And then you would do your circle the way that cause people have a hard time with ellipses. So I know this is my halfway point. This is my halfway point here. This is my halfway point here, and this is my halfway point here. So then I'm going to try to round off these corners. And that can be a bit tricky when you're first trying to figure it out. So you don't want to cut off too much. Just trying to turn it from a square into a circle on that top. So you can see that I've gotten a really unusual shape here. And that just has to do with that object in perspective. Now the same thing would happen. I'm gonna come straight down here. That's gonna tell me where the edge of that circle is. Straight down here, right? And so I know that this part isn't actually, that part of the, the square is no longer part of or the part of the cube is no longer part of my cylinder. It's like my cylinder was inside of it. And I also know that I'm going to cut off this exact same triangle here. And the same thing right here. So what you want to see is it's reflecting that same shape there as it is here. And you can't see around the sides 
right? So when it's like this, you can see that curve, but you can't see anything beyond this side and this side. That's sort of how a cylinder sits in space. And then your, uh, your inside tube would be the same. So that's how to render it that way. But of course, I mean, you can just look at your, uh, your toilet paper, however it's sitting, and you can, sometimes they get squished too. So it might be even a little, mine is a little bit misshapen. So I had it stuffed in the cupboard. So I have my toilet paper and I'm going to try to figure out how to, so I'm just doing some quick sketches here, how to draw my toilet paper in the shape that it's currently in. And that can be a bit tricky, right? So just working on sketching. And once you're happy with that, then you can start thinking about uh, a larger, a larger drawing. So I'm just going to do that larger drawing over here. And then I'm going to try to incorporate some of that white pattern on it, which is going to make it from just a regular drawing to something that might be a little bit more meditative in quality. So some, sometimes it's, uh, it's pretty soothing to get into drawing pattern. I know that in my many years of teaching, once I have students that are uh, starting to work on something that is uh, intricately patterned, they often get very quiet because they're they're into the drawing. They're in the zone of of creating something repetitive, and our brains often uh, are soothed by repetitive sound, repetitive actions. So I'm just roughing in this shape here and you'll notice when I draw again especially if I'm just starting a sketch some people are very neat and very deliberate with their lines uh, I'm not one of those people I do a lot of construction lines to begin with and then I'll tidy those up before I start working on my tone or sometimes not at all so I just got that rough shape in there. I'm pretty happy with it. So I did the shape of my toilet paper as I know it exists. And then I observed that on my particular roll right now, the way that it's sitting, the bottom part of the, the paper is sort of rolled outwards. So I'm just going to tidy this up just the tiniest amount. Now, it's important to leave those construction lines in when you're first starting to draw because otherwise you could draw exactly the same wrong line several times. You could draw it once, erase it, draw it exactly the same way, erase it again, draw it exactly the same way, erase it again. So our brains are kind of funny like that. But if you leave the uh, if you leave that construction line there, you know where to make the adjustment from, and then you can just tidy them all up at once. It's a time saver. It's also um, a frustration saver. So the pencil I'm working with today, uh, I tend to work with these quite a bit when I'm drawing now. I like them quite a lot, but they are by no means um, necessary material. This is just a, a drawing pencil. This one in particular is a Palomino Blackwing, and it's a Bauhaus edition. I like these because they don't roll off my table on me and also because they are economical in that you can remove the eraser. So it actually, this all slides out and you can get uh, eraser replacement packages, which are really inexpensive. And oftentimes in my classroom, for sure, uh, that's the first thing that goes on the pencil. Even though I have an eraser, I'll still automatically often use the one that is on the end of the pencil. So now we're going to start thinking about the tone that's on here. So I'm going to think about the inside of this. I'm not going to get it too dark yet because what will happen once I start shading, once I start adding value, adding a variety of tonal, uh, tonal pieces to this, 
then I'm probably gonna smudge all over it. Now, if you are a smudger, what you can do is you can just put a piece of paper under your hand here. It'll keep you from rubbing all over your page. But I'm gonna kind of work, um, hopefully, with my hand off of it over here. We'll see, we'll see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some tone with, uh, with a time lapse, and then I will put this back on live. Okay, so um, you can add as much tone as you want. If you are someone who is fussy, you are maybe trying to get an idea of photorealism, you can totally go in and uh, you can actually, if you can spare a square, you can actually go in if this is something you're trying to learn, is photorealism. I personally, it's not my thing, but. I understand that some people love it. So you can go in and you can actually, I make a little like muffin, only use one square. A little muffin like this, Kleenex also works. Um, tissue paper will work. If you have a drawing uh, stump or drawing blender, that'll work great too. I personally don't love the look of it. So I often leave my drawings so that they have evidence of a human hand that uh, that drew them, or otherwise, um, yeah, I just, I kind of feel a bit weird about um, photorealism, but it can be very beautiful, but this is not, uh, this channel is not going to be aiming for photorealism, let's just say that. Now, if you want to um, think about the pattern on here now, you can start doing that, and I'm gonna add that in. Again, I'll do another time lapse just so you're not uh, sitting here painstakingly listening to me chatter while I try to render that. All right. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I could have probably done a little bit more detail on just finishing up like little bits, but uh, again, that's entirely up to you how much you want to work on this. Uh, you could make it like a, a five minute drawing, you could make it a 20 minute drawing, you could make it a 40 hour photorealistic drawing. Again, totally up to you. Uh, if you want, you can actually extend this lesson and you can start thinking about like, okay, so why, why do the toilet paper, why does it have the pattern and is the pattern useful and is there a pattern that is more appealing to me? Now, I know um, there's another toilet paper I like that has this sort of pattern I remember because I noticed I love hearts and um, it actually has a heart pattern. It doesn't have these roses and um, I think that's a really pretty pattern too. So if you were designing your own pattern, you might think like, okay, so uh, what are some patterns I could think of and why would those be better or why don't they use those? Um, so yeah, take your time, observe pattern, observe the things around you. Think of the roles that uh, all the people have played from like the first people who um, fell, planted the trees maybe, and then fell the trees, and then worked in the, the pulp mills to come up with these and also the designers. And how did they decide on toilet paper tubes? Because uh, there's lots of places that don't use the tube, that instead use a pile of folded, uh, already pre-measured bits of toilet paper. So uh, it's not universal. Toilet paper is not necessarily universal either. Lots of places in the world don't even use toilet paper. So what are your alternatives? There's so many places you could go with this idea. Anyhow, 
thank you for tuning in and uh, like and subscribe to the video. Uh, if you hit for notifications, you'll get one for whenever I add one. That makes it easier because I might be uh, somewhat unreliable in my posting, just depending on how fast my home network is that day. So anyhow, I hope that everyone is enjoying time to themselves, uh, working on some artwork, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Be kind to one another.